seeing your perspective, and we are at the Bowery Poetry Club, and we are backstage in the Lower East Side of Manhattan with the fabulous, talented Bridget and the Squares, and they just rocked the house. They just performed four songs, it was totally amazing and fabulous. How did the name Bridget and the Squares come about? Um, Bridget and the Squares um, started four years ago, 2006, with a totally different group of squares. But um, we were trying to think of a band name and we had a really hard time coming up with one. We had several different names that we went by and then um, they all ended up being taken one way or another. So we came up with the idea of doing Laura and the Squares. And I hated how it sounded because of the double A. I wanted there to be a hard consonant on the end, the separation between the two. So I just said, let's go with my middle name, Bridget. And, and that's how we named the band. So how has it been starting a band? Like, what is that process like? Like, how was this band even birthed? Um, I mean, I was a singer-songwriter in college, and I mean, I've been writing songs since I was like 16, and started, I went to Berkeley College of Music, and played out as a singer-songwriter a lot there, and then I realized there's something missing, like I really wanted a band, I didn't want to be a singer-songwriter, I didn't want to be another, you know, Melissa Farrick or... Melissa Etheridge or something. Yeah, anyway, I wanted to have like yeah. a band and a so rock band. Kyle and Aaron, how did you guys come into the mix? Uh, well, Laura, I met Laura Bridget, and I met at a uh, kind of a uh, little industry event. You know, a couple <laughs> of bands hanging out and everything, and we just, you know, hit it off right at the outset. And so we, she said, "Well, I need a bass player," and I said, "Well, I need a band," and we started playing some gigs. It worked out pretty well. Yeah, that works out. Yeah. You, Kyle. Uh, Laura saw me play here actually at an open mic and said I want to work with that guy and then we started hanging out and I said I play drums and she goes I need a drummer and so here we go. Love it, love it. So for those of you who don't know, um, a lot of this show is about people in their 20s who have a passion and a drive for whether it's music, um, acting, singing, dancing, whatever, and they're going for their passion with all their heart in the midst of trials, the economy, rent, all that good stuff. Um, with that said, I read online that you sold everything, for the most part, to move out here to Brooklyn. I did. To pursue this. What was that experience like? It was awesome. Honestly, it was awesome. It was invigorating. Because I, you know, I lived in Boston my whole life, and then all of a sudden just decided to leave for various reasons. And I had an entire house of stuff that was mine that I had collected over several years of living out of my parents' house. And I decided none of it was coming with me. And I just left everything. I sold, you know, couches, beds, dressers, like everything that I had I sold so I could move here. And I came here with literally just a van's worth of stuff. I feel like um, for myself, fear is a lot um, in how these experiences take place. I feel like Fear can either make us or break us. You know, mm -hmm. it can be the catalyst that pushes us or it's the thing that we're like, oh, it stops us. Mm -hmm. As a group, how has fear affected you? And individually, like, how have you all kind of conquered your fears? That's nerve-wracking up there. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess, for me, you know, I started do. I've been doing this for so long, but I always felt like, you know, there was something holding me back that wouldn't, didn't let me really pursue it to the you know, lengths that you have to to really do anything in music. I always felt like if I really tried and I failed, it would be way more devastating than if I just kind of happened. When you say something holding you back, what? Well, I, I was afraid. I was afraid to really do what I wanted to do because I knew how much work it was going to take and I was terrified of doing all that work and then still failing. So what was the moment that you decided the work is worth it? I guess... You know, it was 2009, and my band had broken up, and I had nothing really going. I, and I had broken up with the, my boyfriend. It was for four years, and the pretty one much the song that. Um, no, actually, no. none of those songs. Are <laughs> <laughs> totally different guy. Okay. Totally okay. different guy. Okay. But no, this. I mean, I broke up with my boyfriend, who we're still really good friends. But it just, you know, it we, we were enabling each other to to both be afraid and both stay mm -hmm. comfortable and stay safe. And I think once I made that decision to break off that comfort zone and to step outside of my comfort zone it's when I decided to just leave and actually make take a chance you know Kyle Aaron has fear affected you individually within the group 
Um, I don't know. I've never been freaked out playing drums. It's very easy for me to just be back there. Wait, how long have you been playing drums? Like 10, 11 years. Since I was pretty young. Yeah. You're a young tyke. A little boy. What would you say to someone in their 20s who may not have been playing since they were 10 or has a totally different experience? They're in New York or they're wherever they are in the world. They have this desire and this drive to go for it and do it, but they just don't. You got to know how. You got nothing to lose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just get up there and do it. Put yourself out there. If it's a subway, if it's a street corner, whatever exactly. it is, just go sing. That's really I think first, we've all done that. Yeah. The first time I played at an open mic, I was literally shaking. Shaking. Yeah. My whole body was shaking. And I played drums a lot on stage at yeah. that point, but actually being the person in the front, I was mm -hmm. terrified. But you just got to keep doing it. And the more and more you do it, you're going to feel more comfortable and you're going to own the stage. And eventually, it's going to, you can do whatever you want. So now you don't shake anymore. Yeah, no. It becomes an old hat after a while, but uh, as, as an emerging artist, to just get out there and do it, you know, then you'll have enough experience after a while to say, been there before. I mean, the very first Bridget and the Squares performance as a band, I was so terrified, I was trying to convince the bass player to allow me to face the piano towards the drums, <laughs> and he was like, no, you can't do that. He's like, you're the front person, you need to do this like this is you you know yeah. and I and I did I did it and it was fine and like and he's right like every time you do it it gets easier and easier and easier you know I mean obviously there's certain situations that are more high pressure but you know just in general like it does get easier you know but I I mean I shook for almost two years of Bridge and the Squares you know Hello. I think you said the key thing it gets easier yeah it you does you gotta do it and it gets Love so, if you could collaborate with any artist, any group, who would it be? That's you. Uh, they're gonna see this and they're gonna hit us up. Okay, yep. the person, the person that I'm really interested in right now and I've been listening to nonstop. I have two artists: Ida Maria and Frightened Rabbit. Ida Maria. And if I could collaborate with anybody, it would be one of those people. And is this collectively? I think we'll stand behind her on that. Awesome. Yeah, they are awesome. <laughs> so in five years, Bridget in the Square will be super famous. Headlining the garden? Yeah. Probably. Stadium shows. Stadium shows. Yeah. Totally. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Bridget in the Square, you guys were so awesome. Thank you so much for the opportunity for me to interview you. Absolutely. I enjoyed meeting all of you. Bridget in the Square will be touring January 14th to the 23rd. They also are on MySpace, myspace.com, that black splash thing. Bridget in the Square, check them out. They are awesome. Thank you so much. Ow. Nicely done. We're bridging the squares. We have CDs for sale. And we're going on tour in January. Please follow us on Twitter and Facebook and MySpace and all those lovely things. Thank you so much. Yeah!